Guys, this is Joe East here. I'm gonna show you how to set up the pre-fault to fault relay test functions with this Verker 900. So with this setup here, we're only gonna use two phases here. And we're going to use an oscilloscope. Again, the two channels on the oscilloscope uh, connected to the two phases here on the voltage generators. Let's set up an under voltage fault with the pre-fault to fault functions of this Verker 900. So we're gonna select this menu here. You'll notice there's three selectors right here. The first one defines the pre-fault setup here and the amount of timing for the pre-fault. And this one right here sets up the fault settings and the amount of time it stays in the fault settings. This right here is whenever you're ready to play the pre-fault to fault setting to see if it triggers a fault on the relay test set. Now this setting right here is at 120 volts on both phases. The phase difference is 0 to 240 from the first to the second and at frequency of 60 hertz. We have it set to last for 10 seconds. This is the pre-fault. Here's the fault setting. 63 volts, same phase, same frequency for 20 seconds. That's the setup here. Now if we're going to play it uh, from fault to pre-fault, we need to select here. All right, so now we're ready to press the play button for it to go from pre-fault to fault. All right, I've backed up here so you can get a screenshot of the scope so we can show you on both the display here, the timer, and right here what it looks like on the scope itself. Okay, so we're gonna press play and you're gonna notice the changes on the scope. It's a, a slow roll, so watch for the slow roll to change from 120 volts to 63 volts. All right, we're counting down for 10 seconds at 120 volts, see the scope? There's a timer here. We tripped. Now we're down to 63 volts and you can see the scope changed. The 63 volts, it's a slow roll so you can see it. And this is gonna last for 20 seconds. The trip is uh, counting up to 20 seconds. And it stopped. You can see the scope. So the scope roll went from 120 volts to 63 volts and then after the test was tripped after 20 seconds it went back to zero. So let's set up an over voltage trip. So here's the pre-fault. Let's say that's normal operations, uh, 120 volts. So that's the pre-fault setup for 10 seconds. Let's go to the fault setup and instead of choosing 63 volts, let's choose 130 volts. That's the fault settings for 20 seconds. It'll last. Pre-fault one more time, 120 volts, 60 hertz the phase difference between the phases. The fault selection is 130 volts. Same frequency, same phase difference, lasts for 20 seconds. So let's go to this menu that says that we're ready to transition from pre-fault to fault when we press play. Okay, so let's press play. We're gonna watch the scope change and the timer here. All right, see the scope change? 120 volts, the timer's counting down, five seconds, four seconds. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Down to the fault mode or up to the fault mode, 130 volts. You see the scope slightly change there to the 130 volts. Counting up 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 trip and the scope goes to zero. So we rolled the scope for you so you can see this, how it looks in the voltage waveform when you set up a pre-fault and fault with them. All right, now we're gonna use this Verker to set up a frequency fault trip case using the pre-fault to fault menu. All right, the pre-fault is set up at 120 volts, 60 hertz with a phase difference between the two voltage channels. The fault condition here, the fault condition here is 120 volts with the same phase shift but at 65 hertz, lasts for 20 seconds. Again, the pre-fault set up for 10 seconds fault set up for 20 seconds. All right, we're backed off here so we can also see the scope. You can watch the frequency change for this pre-fault to fault setup. Again, let's press the button where we can do the pre-fault to fault setup and play. Watch the scope. All right, countdown. We're at uh, 60 hertz on the scope. Counting down, it's five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, second. All right, now we're up to 65 hertz for 
20 seconds. We're at 5. And it shuts down and the scope goes down. Let's set up an under frequency fault here. Again, the pre fault to fault menu. Pre fault, 10 seconds at normal voltage phase and frequency. The fault setup for 20 seconds at 120 volts. Good phase difference, but 53 hertz, which would be an under frequency fault in North America. We backed off so we got a view of the scope also. So whenever we hit play, we'll see the voltage waveforms on the scope. So let's uh, select the menu of pre fault to fault play. All right. For 10 seconds, we're at 60 hertz. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fault, trip. Now we're at uh, 53 hertz roughly on the scope, you can see. That's going to last for 20 seconds. 19, 20 and trip, and it disappears off the scope as we expect. All right, we're going to quickly show you how to set up this Verker 900 as a voltage source. We're also going to use an oscilloscope so you can monitor the waveforms. So the setup here is I have two channels, U1 and U2, set up at 120 volts, 60 hertz with no phase angle between them. And we're going to ramp up and down the voltage, ramp up and down the phase difference, and ramp up and down the frequency so you can understand how to apply this either for a relay test set or for product testing. So those of you who are product development engineers might want to use this as an input voltage to product testing for the market to make sure when you go to market it can handle the frequency, voltage, and phase shifts on the mains voltage. Right, let's back up to the scope so we can see uh, how the voltage waveforms come out. All right, now we got a view of the scope and the Zverker user interface. So we're going to press play now here and it's going to activate the uh, two channels and you'll see them pop up on the scope and there you go they're on the scope they're actually on top of each other so it looks like one signal on the scope but we're going to uh, separate them by phase right now so you can start seeing the uh, difference in the two signals so we're going to select the frequency here of uh, channel two i'm going to ramp it up a bit so we can separate the traces on the scope Let's separate them by about 60 degrees. That way you can see what's going on there. So let's select channel 2, frequency. And we're going to dial down the frequency to, say, 50 hertz. All right, so you can see that we uh, on the scope we have the two signals, uh, channel 1 and channel 2, both at 120 volts, separated by about 60 degrees, and both at 60 hertz. So I'm going to start cranking down the frequency on channel 2 and you'll notice the scope uh, readings will change because it's going to be channel 2 at a different frequency but the uh, source for the trigger is on channel 1 so watch this. So coming down, see the frequency changing there on channel, channel 2, you're going to see it kind of drifting there a little bit. That's because they're at different frequencies slightly. If I go further down, the faster it'll go. So at about 58.9 hertz, you can definitely see it on the scope, the difference of what the different frequencies do. And we go all the way down to uh, 10 hertz, of course. Uh, you see that. So we're at 10 hertz there on channel 2 and uh, 60 hertz on channel 1. Let's go up a bit. Alright, so we're about 35-ish hertz there. See the differences? And on up. go up. Okay, so we're at about, um, let's go up. We're a little over 100 hertz now on channel 2. Okay, so that's the frequency differences you can, you can do with the, uh, um, with this Verker 900. All right, again, we're looking at this Verker 900 with a couple of channels on the scope here, so you can see it the phase difference of 60 degrees so you can tell the difference between the traces on the scope. Let's grab the voltage on channel 2 and 
start dialing it down so you can see how this works on the scope that looks like. There you go. 11, 110, 19, 18, 107. You see the scope. 6, 105, 104, 103, 102, 101. About 100 right there, so you can definitely see a difference on the scope magnitude of the voltage. Let's go up above 120. All right, you see it climbing higher. We're outside of the scope viewing zone, about right there, about 130 peak to peak. We're outside of the viewing zone. All right, with the Sperker 900, let's do the uh, phase shift. So right now we're at um, 120 volts, 60 hertz on both channels on the scope, you can see, but they're separated by 60 degrees. So let's grab the phase here and just um, mess around here with the, the dial so you can see how it looks when you separate the phases. Let's crank it up kind of fast so you can see the motion in there on the scope. About 127 degrees separate right there. About 120 degrees separate there. About 180 right there separate. So if they're 180 degrees separate, there'll be kind of a balanced look on the scope. Let's go to 270 approximately. All right, 270 degrees, which is just a flip side of the 90 degrees. Let's go to 360. All right. Once you get 360, it actually flips back to zero degrees, which is common sense on some systems. And forward again. It's about a 20 degrees uh, shift. You can see the separate traces on the scope. All right, I want to point out one more thing on the manual operation of this Verker 900. Let's uh, again grab two phases at a normal frequency. and Let's separate them by 120 degrees on the phase. Let's turn it on so you can see it on the scope. All right, so you see those two signals 120 degrees apart. One thing you can do with a ramp knob is select, say, two frequencies at once and ramp them both up. And you'll notice um, on the scope, the frequencies are changing, right? We're about 120 hertz here, 122, 120, 120 hertz-ish there. So you can select both frequencies and ramp them up or down at the same time. So you can go down to 10 hertz, or you can go all the way up to 600 hertz. And the scope uh, actually measures that also at 600 hertz, even though it's a weird, let's just show you the waveform here. Okay, so we're at 120 volts, uh, both channels at uh, 600 hertz. And uh, this Broker 900 holds it pretty well. Let's go all the way down to 10 hertz and I'll readjust the, uh, the scope when we get there. 10 hertz, let's adjust the scope. There you go. One more. <clears throat> Two more, there we go. So we're at 10 hertz there and you can see the scope. It's a uh, slower signal, the trigger. It's triggering slower. On the manual ramping, you can deselect the frequency and select, say, voltage. And we can ramp that down together, both channels. So let's go down, down, down. We're about 73 volts there. 20 volts. 33 volts. About 44 volts. 54 volts. And on and on. 78 volts. And back to 120 volts where we started. And let's turn it off. Turn off the signal.